Carl Friedrich Louis Doberman, who was born on the 21st of January 1834 and who died on the 9th of June 1895, was a Prussian official. A clerk at the town hall in the city of Apolda in Thuringia, he performed various activities, tax collector, bailiff, town crier, dog catcher, management of the town kennel, night watchman, etc. He was also a passionate dog lover, and since some of the duties of which he was in charge involved some risk, and which at times meant he went around with considerable sums of money, he bred and selected dogs particularly suited for guard and watch duties, and he always took a couple of them with him when working. They were pincher-type dogs, very widespread then all over Germany, and whose ancient origins date back to the Stone Age. Doberman bred dogs along with two partners and operated in such a way as to obtain a dog that was particularly suitable for guard and watch duties, introducing blood from other breeds into the pincher to improve the local type selected by him. In Apolda, on the first Sunday of Pentecost, a dog market of all kinds was held, gun dogs, watch dogs, sheep dogs, etc., and those bred by Doberman were much in demand and renowned and were commonly called Doberman Pincher. In 1951, Philipp Grunig, editor of the German magazine Unser Doberman, wrote that Doberman had two extremely mordacious and not very high dogs that always accompanied him for defence. One was a mousy grey colour, the other being black dappled. Progenitor of the breed was a female born from the mating between a pincher and one of Doberman's bitches named Bismarck. Bismarck was black with yellow dapple, of large size and with the right desired character, she also being of pincher type. The name Bismarck was later on changed to Bizart, on the order of the Burgermeister, who considered it disrespectful towards the powerful Chancellor to call a dog by such a name. Robert, one of Doberman's sons, recalls in one of his recollections that Bizart, in her first litter, also produced puppies of a colour between grey and off-white, which were known as Melsack in the family, that is, sacks of flour. Exactly which breeds have contributed to the formation of the type we now know is not known with certainty, but the already cited Philipp Grunig, in the same article published in 1951, mentions the Weimaraner, the Manchester Terrier, which was higher than the present day type in those days, and the Greyhound. There is definite news of the use of the Manchester Terrier and the Greyhound. In addition to the French Bosseron, introduced by Napoleon Bonaparte into all the countries he conquered. Some people believe that a dog called the Stoppelhopser, by now extinct, was also used and it also contributed to the creation of the German Shepherd Dog. Also the Butcher's Dog, the extinct progenitor of the Rottweiler, according to many, among which Otto Settegast, who was among the first of its breeders, are to be considered among its ancestors. The Doberman made its first appearance in a show in 1897 in Erfurt, not far from Apolda, and was recognised in 1898. In 1899, dogs of the breed were exhibited at a show in Berlin and in Apolda in 1900. Much of the credit for the formation of the Doberman goes to Otto Goehler, who was one of the first breeders with the von Thuringen notice and contributed to its creation, so much so that in 1949 somebody wrote in a dog magazine Columbus discovered America and Amerigo Vespucci gave it its name. Otto Goehler created the breed and Doberman gave it its name. Goehler fought to get the Doberman officially recognised and was among the instigators of the club that was founded in Apolda in 1899. The first two dogs registered in the pedigree books were his. Graf Belling von Grönland at number one and Gerhilde von Grönland at number two. Even better dogs started to be born from the start of the 20th century onwards, both from an aesthetic and character point of view, and their numbers grew considerably. With the outbreak of the First World War, breeding came to a sudden halt, but upon its termination the breed resumed spreading, also as a message dog with the occupying armies and, in the immediate post-war period, made its appearance in the United States, proving a big success. 
The tests of courage and intelligence shown in military use during the two world wars were to confirm the Doberman's reputation throughout the world. The Doberman also appeared in cinema films, always playing the part of the fierce guardian or the fearsome wartime message dog. It captured the public's imagination and the demand for dogs of the breed grew out of all proportion. Such demand came from those seeking an effective defender and guardian during a delicate moment of our history in which there was a lot of insecurity and fear. It also has to be remembered that the Doberman had practically become a symbol and many began to want one only so as to be able to show it off to the attention of others and gratify their own vanity. Those years saw the formation of the metropolitan legends and popular imagination with regard to the breed, at times often encouraged by the mass media. People no longer talked about the SS of dogs, but of dogs of the SS, specifically bred to go mad at three or five or nine years old. It was condescendingly explained that since the Doberman's brain grew more than the cranium, the dog went mad after a few years and became mordacious and dangerous with everybody, including its master. It was said that the jaw was shaped in such a way as to lock once having bitten. They were all lies that hid the simple truth. The Doberman had physical and character problems because it had been badly bred by a large number of unprepared, unscrupulous and incompetent breeders. Alongside the large number of second-rate breeders, there were also excellent, serious and qualified people making selections. Real enthusiasts who also continued through the dark years to breed with competence and enthusiasm, and they managed to take the Doberman back to its original type, achieving dogs of undeniable value that have gained distinction in the rings worldwide, including Germany, the breed's homeland. The Doberman has a very marked pack instinct. It is the instinct that makes it intervene also harshly against whoever tries to invade the territory occupied by the group it belongs to, or threatens its balance, or threatens one of its members. Sensitivity is another trait of this breed that allows it to understand what the master wants also by a minimal gesture, ready to perform the command promptly and enthusiastically. Anyone who has seen a Doberman working well together with its handler has always been amazed. This is why it is a good idea, if you want to proceed with training your dog, to see to it personally. The Doberman is tied to its master by profound affection and therefore will multiply the energy put into carrying out exercises. Again, to point out the Doberman's working capacities, we quote a test carried out by Dr. Bruckner, who was chief of staff of the German army during the Second World War, responsible for the preparation of dogs then destined to the operational departments between 1939 and 1945, and who had over 45,000 specimens trained under his command. According to Bruckner, the Doberman works quickly on the trail with its muzzle raised, in searching, it is no less sure than dogs that follow the trail with their noses to the ground, and in return proceeds with greater speed. It learns less easily than the German Shepherd, which obeys immediately and shows a greater desire to learn. However, this does not take away the fact that having once learned an exercise, it will stay in its memory. Its character, though lively and incisive, is definitely better equipped than that of the Airedale. It is without doubt the fastest and most constant breed in following a trail. It moves extremely well over any terrain, boldly overcoming dunes, swamps, rocks, etc. The Doberman, in my opinion, is the most suitable breed as a message dog. It performs very well as a track dog, guard dog, watchdog and medical dog. Its wartime use has always shown that if a Doberman in war situations is subjected to stressful conditions, crossfire, explosions, flames, etc., it will complete the task entrusted to it and, if required, will repeat it. Whereas the same dog, if wounded during a military operation, will complete the task but will refuse to repeat it later on. <laughs>